cubic equation um, with a very large integer constant. In fact, that integer constant has um, 36 divisors, it turns out, and I'll show you why later on. But let's just assume that x is a positive integer solution to this. You can see by inspection almost, this, this would imply okay, that x squared uh, minus x cubed is less than zero, right? There's no doubt about that. If x is an integer and x is positive, this always holds, right? Okay, so that cuts our search in half. In fact, it implies that x has to be less than zero. Okay, this, all of this implies that x has to be less than zero. So in other words, if you trust me that this has 36 divisors, all we have to look at is the negative divisors. So this statement right here implies that our integer x uh, has to be less than zero. Helpful information, cuts the search in half, that's never a bad thing. Now let's go ahead and take a look at this factored form here. Now a lot of you are saying, well just use the rational zero theorem. Well, I'm trying to get around that old clunky way of doing things. It works, but you have a lot of divisors here. So let's see if just factoring it can get us to uh, first base or, or get us to the home plate. Now. Again, this takes a little bit of time. I'm not saying it's the best thing in the world, but it is another approach. Okay, 1452 passes the divisibility test for two, three, and 11. Now, it's clear it passes it for two. The sum of the, divisions, uh, the, sum of the digits is divisible by three, so it does it for three. It's not divisible by five. There's a divisibility test for seven, but you can tell it doesn't work just because seven does not divide 52. And so it turns out it's divisible by 11, and you guys probably have seen that test. If you sum up in an alternating fashion, two minus five, see how we're just alternating from uh, right to left, you can do it the other way too. You just gotta keep track of uh, the sign. But uh, you have two minus five uh, plus four minus one, which is certainly uh, manifestly equal to zero. Okay, let me, let me erase that. Okay, uh, that's equal to uh, zero minus one. Right here, folks, we get equal to zero. Now, every integer is a, uh, is a multiple of zero, right? So, meaning that 11, I may not have said that exactly right, but 11 divides zero. Now often on this test you would get a multiple of 11, but zero is a multiple of 11, right? So that means this, this guy is also divisible by 11. Okay, and again, y'all, I just alternated from right to left. That's because uh, 10 to the n is congruent to minus one to the n, is why that works out if you look at the Hindu Arabic expansion of, of an of a integer. So what we have is this right here, folks. We have x squared times one minus x is equal to two squared times three times 11 squared. Uh, and again, that, this is not hard to figure out once you know these are the only three divisors doing the divisibility tests, okay? Now we also know, we, we learned at the beginning that x has to be less than zero. So that gives us some information. We know that x has to be less than zero. And y'all, just by the prime factorization, a very natural attempt is either to put the two here or the 11 here. But notice we have to put, and I'll just do the answer. You could check either one, but uh, minus 11 squared, right? Times one minus minus 11, okay, is equal to, and what's lo I just love doing prime factorization stuff because you never really have to know too much about the actual magnitude of the number, really. But see, that's exactly what this is, folks. This part right here is four times three, which is the 12 you see right here. You see this piece? This piece right here is equal to this piece. So we've, we found a solution. Uh, X equals to negative 11 is the solution. And if you explore this a little bit more, it turns out there's two complex conjugate pairs. We didn't ask for that but we asked for the integer solution. So again, a nice method, and you could have listed, oh yeah, uh, I do wanna say that um, 
there are, this, this is the answer to the question, folks, but there are three times two times three positive divisors. And I'll just put positive div, okay? Now, the way you do that, folks, it's, this is kind of a very rudimentary classical result for number theory. You just increment these exponents. 2 plus 1 is 3. And it's very easy to see if you just look at the from a combinant of torques point of view. But 2 plus 1 is 3. 1 plus 1 is 2. And 2 plus 1 is 3 right here. So there's positive divisors. That's, what is that? Is that 18? Yeah, that's 18. But then there's also the negative divisors, right? So that's why there's, overall, there's 36 divisors. So all I'm trying to point out to you is that you would have to go through these 36 divisors or use the car's rule of sign or try to get a bound and all of that if you do the standard banal hackneyed rational zero theorem. Looking at the prime factorization is often a good idea. Now the drawback to that of course is that if the number gets big enough it's hard to find the prime factorization but the same thing holds for the rational zero theorem. You just you got a larger and larger number it's hard to list all the all the divisors right. So I, I think this method is pretty darn good for this type of equation uh, we didn't have an x-term in it, so that's, uh, that it's easier to factor and look at. Sometimes you wouldn't know how to factor this, and you couldn't do this either. But for this particular problem, this method is superior to just the rational zero theorem. And again, the answer is uh, x equals negative 11.